WLRS Crypto Daily Show. Remember to catch your favorite WLRS Crypto Radio content on Spotify and everywhere podcasts are heard. Welcome to the Crypto Daily Show brought to you by WLRS Crypto Radio. I'm your host, David, and I'm here with Dylan and Austin today to cover the most recent stories happening in crypto today. As always, this information is for entertainment purposes and it's educational too. Uh, if you can't tell, I messed up that paragraph. Uh, but what this is not is it's not financial advice. Isn't that right, boys? No financial advice will be found here. I give it sometimes, but <laughs> we do not cut that. Cut it. Cut that. Cut that. Cut that. Uh, yeah, man, I'm finally on the daily. Sorry about my absence. I'm just, uh, I'm busy, man. I'm, I'm, I'm busy building. We didn't a get of... a single comment about where you were at or anything, nor <laughs> no, did we make mention of it. <sighs> in fact, they were some Dude, of... Dude, I got to talk like there's a, uh, an audience of billions. Get real. In fact, they were some of our best numbers on YouTube. Well, I think I think short form content is clearly winning um, unless you have like a solidified podcast, but uh, it takes time and it's hard to produce that kind of content. Why is my camera all? Come on, Dave. Use that Walrus Radio money. Get you a new camera. 1080p. It's supposed to be. That's the thing. Anyway, uh, today is March 14th, 2023. That makes it Pi Day. So no matter what you do today, just make sure your decimals never end. You you see my tweet at at Gary Gensler about Pi Day? No, what was it? Uh, He was celebrating Pi Day and... I said clowns. Not that pie is probably what he said. <laughs> <laughs> I said clowns and pies go really good together. So I yeah, he like hints you would tweet this. Dylan's doing his best to get Glacier on his radar. <laughs> God damn. No, he's got Walrus Radio on his, his Twitter handle at least. <laughs> he's probably been watching us. He's probably just roast viewer. him. <laughs> and he's like he's waiting for us to launch a token. He's just These waiting. motherfuckers talking about me tonight. The second we find a way to give money to NFT holders, like all <laughs> ten of them, mm-hmm. it's a wrap. It, he, it's he's he's coming to shut us down. Gary, uh, if you are listening, uh, send an email. Uh, we'd love to talk to you. Bring you we'll on. We'll talk. Show. We'll have you on the show. Defend yourself at least. You know you don't have to be a. We're, as a couple, big we're of nice a guys. Spineless coward as you are to retell, but not that it's, spineless coward. <laughs> Sorry, that's, the only, that's the only thing I can do whenever I hear Gary Gensler now. Um, not that steak. And if pie is not your thing, it's also potato chip day, guys. Um, pies or pies Ooh. or chips? You can go sweet or savory today. And uh, I do both usually at one time. Potato gotta, chip pie? I, I, no, that's actually not a joke. I usually eat like chocolate and like something salty, like chips. You know the who made those? It was like chocolate covered potato chips. Uh, Reese's did, and they were delicious. Yeah, those were good. They put Lay's chips in the middle of a Reese's, or in a Reese's. No, not those. Not that. those. These are actually chocolate covered chips. Oh, I'd eat the fuck out of that. I don't know. That doesn't sound good to me. But you guys know. Well, Dylan knows. I have a website, and it tells me how many shares each of these special days get. Uh, Pie Day had twenty three thousand shares. Uh, Potato Chip Day had three thousand shares. And a more interesting honorable mention, Celebrate Scientists Day, had 114 shares. Um, so how about a big shout out to the scientists? Huh? You're not getting enough love. <laughs> to all scientists? Or... Uh, it says Celebrate Scientists Day, 114 shares. That's I like awesome. biologists and like marine biologists. Those people, those scientists are pretty dope. What about those ones that steal whales? They steal them. What do you mean they steal them? They take them? a big whale vacuum, suck them up off the beach, nah, and put them in zoos, and train them to do cod. sadistic tricks and stuff. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if our show sponsors are listening, please don't cancel us. Uh, WarFi, this week's content, is brought to you by WarFi, an intuitive investing experience on Binance Smart Chain. Buy a Warbot NFT and let it accumulate rewards from trading bot investments. Learn more for yourself at warfi.games. This show is also brought to you by Vinium Finance. To take control of your money and become your own bank with Vinium. They're building a lot over there, including NFT collateralized lending and borrowing. 
permissionless leveraged yield farming and revenue generating services beyond lending interest. Vinium lets you unleash your capital. Learn more at Vinium.finance. You guys ready for the news? I am. I know Austin has probably not seen the show notes. <laughs> show well, notes? Show notes? I can't get you know to them, I don't think. He, he, you know what they say about show notes? We don't. What do they say about show not notes? Not those show notes. <laughs> you, if you're on the DeFi show notes, it's not those. I'm so not on any show notes. You're just today. gonna have to. I'm feed, I'm feeding off your energy. I'm feeding off your energy, brother. There it is. You put Coming. it out. I'm 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 sniffing it up and I'm putting it back out. Yeah. Uh, Jim Cramer puts out an, a call sell call to sell your Bitcoin, uh, and not even 12 hours later, Bitcoin rallied up four thousand bucks. So the uh, that, Mr. Kramer. I have a I have an interesting leverage for Bitcoin to that that I went through. A lot of people call me a pretty degen leverage guy, Dave. Yeah, and I did do a thirty x leverage with three hundred dollars on Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, but the, uh, here's the thing: I did a long, and it was at nineteen nine hundred, and I closed it at eighty percent gain, which was twenty thousand five hundred. Just to show you, with a five hundred dollar increase, I made eighty percent on my leverage trade, right? Well, then Bitcoin ran all the way up to twenty five hundred, I mean twenty five thousand, and I likely would have made like six or seven grand off of that leverage. So that goes to show you: never close your leverage till you get liquidated. <laughs> <laughs> this is not financial advice. <laughs> it's certainly not the financial advice you're looking for. I would take eighty percent over zero any day. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but is going exactly against Jim Cramer financial advice because at this point they I, made, I um, think it might be financial advice. They made the inverse inverse Cramer ETF. I don't know if where you can buy it. it it's a it's a traded stock. You can pull it right up. It's a yeah. publicly traded company? It's a, a, it, it was a ETF. SPAC. Oh yeah, ETF, ETF. So that is that might be financial advice. I'm not going to say it is or it isn't, but it might be. You know, all those real financial advisors out there always say to buy ETFs, uh, and this inverse Kramer is an ETF. So it boom. basically just, yeah, it looks at what he says to do and does the opposite every time. <laughs> and 50% of the time it works, 100% of the time. I'm with that. Uh, so this is an interesting one for the United States. A legal ruling was served via NFT in a Florida crypto theft case. A federal judge in Florida ruled in favor of a plaintiff who sued an anonymous hacker and issued a formal notice of legal action via NFT. Uh, So the judge's decision was that the NFT constituted a legitimate form of legal notification for these defendants, and it marks the first time an American federal court has allowed defendants to be served by NFT. I think it's dope. It's awesome. It's wicked cool, right? Yeah, it actually really is cool. I mean, that means that the government already sees the value in it, uh, which they already did because uh, they're, you know, but they want to they want to fud it out to no, so nobody uses it. But uh, the blockchain itself is just such a, an awesome tool. Um, yeah, and if you're like a high profile defendant being served, you know, like you're like. I don't know, like an OJ level, you know, defendant, you could sell your NFT. That's true. Serving, right? Because it has no legal fees. Right. That's pretty, that's pretty dope. Right? You're like, this is the NFT that <laughs> <laughs> was served for double murder. Probably wouldn't do well for like prolific pedophiles or anything like that. I don't know. I don't I don't know. know. It might There's do a bunch better. of weird freaks out there. They'll buy that's anything. True. That's true. That's true. Um, like, dude, like, who is that? Dahmer. He had a ton of fans, and he was eating people. We had talked about this in the past in regards to, like, the service records for a vehicle being on the blockchain. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, this is just another interesting, like, kind of out-of-the-box legal way uh, to use NFTs. Yeah. So, uh, I'm a big fan of that. I, I think we'll see that more often, especially stuff like real estate. Um, I think it'll be – I think it'll come into play – really heavy hell there might be an nft marketplace at some point where you can just buy a house with bitcoin and the deed comes to you in an nft that's called sandbox i believe 
Oh, it's happening. No, I don't know. That'd Sand, Sandland, you know, <laughs> Paris Hilton, all that stuff. Yes. <clears throat> um, finance is making some moves. Uh, it's going to convert one billion worth of BUSD tokens to a mix of Bitcoin, Ethereum, BNB, and other tokens. They announced that it would convert a big old bunch of money to another big old bunch of money. I wonder. I wonder if they're making an investment on the bottom, or if they're doing it because of BUSD FUD uh, and optics. Uh, I wonder what the. I wonder what the design of that is from CZ. I'm assuming uh, it's because he's bought. He, he thinks that it's it's a good time to DCA. Um, and, and that you know, Bitcoin is hit its its most bearish moment. Um, obviously, it can uh, still go lower. He's not trading the one billion. Could you imagine? But mm. I think it's I a think good it's, time. Yeah, I think it's definitely a dual purpose. With like, you know, move some of that BUSD out of the way just in case. Yeah, with he, and get, yeah, he said given uh, the changes in stable coins and banks. So it might be like an American bank FUD kind of thing, like where he's not trusting his bank to hold a billion dollars in cash. He said that he's going to be buying uh, native crypto, Bitcoin, BNB, and ETH. 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 Yeah. Vital- ETH. Vitalik. <laughs> not that ETH. Vitalik. All right, that's my last one. Um, shit. Oh, no. You know what you should have done, Austin, when mm-hmm. you were fucking around with your BTC long? You should have bought USDC at eighty-one cents. And, and well, during that. That, during that entire thing, Dylan was calling me drunk and screaming, "USDC is collapsing!" Oh yeah, my god, you're drunk. And, and you said USDC is collapsing at eleven p.m. And I had family over, so I wasn't about to go go down. I was like, "USDC is fine." And he was like, "Is it?" <laughs> and I said, "Yeah, man, it's gonna be all right." He said, "That's what they said about UST." <laughs> Very different. And I was like, yeah, they're a little bit different, but uh, forgive me for caring. Fuck. But you. I remember I remember freaking out when Phantom was crashing. When uh that super whale was like gonna get uh, Roosh. Yeah. You know he run that's who runs uh solidly on ETH. Dylan, if you didn't know that. I he funds that. he funds all of solidly ETH. Funds it with the big bags. But yeah, he's got big money still. He's got big money he had big money then, he's got big money still. Yeah, where where are my bailouts? I could use a damn bailout. <laughs> that. Too big no, to fail. We're Not common. Either. Walrus we're Radio peasants. is too big to fail. This is episode 30. That's uh, three Baker's Dozens plus one. No. Uh, Baker's Dozens 13, isn't it? Yeah, plus one, I said. 29. 13 times three plus one. 30. 39 be 39 am i am austin oh yeah shit. Your, your yeah <laughs> no Cut look that. like I, when it Cut comes to math like i'm actually like a like super you person said, you would have said 12 plus one times three because 12 just, times three plus one this you know whole this you know what this episode's never even coming out yeah we're we're cutting the whole fucking thing. it's just gonna go straight to 31 and we're gonna release this episode as the lost episode as an nft but this whole this whole thing will be cut out. Cut that. Um, no, yes, it's not three bakers, dozens of episodes. <laughs> but I'll remember for episode forty that three bakers, dozens plus one plus one. It's a good. couple weeks. We'll get there. Um, Signature Bank, bank number three, the hat trick, shut down after some regulatory action. Uh, New York Department of Financial Services seized a crypto-friendly bank, Signature Bank, in order to protect depositors, quote-unquote, the state banking regulator said Sunday night. Uh, They also said, quote-unquote, today we are taking decisive actions to protect U.S. economy by strengthening public confidence in our banking system. This step will ensure that U.S. banking system continues to perform its vital roles of protecting deposits and providing access to credit to households and businesses in a manner that promotes strong and sustainable economic growth. I mean, listen, I'm pretty sure they're going to turn it political. This entire 100%. Thing. Yeah. It's uh, but, but the thing is, it really shouldn't be. This is our entire f- financial institution. Every single 
constituent, congressman, everybody should be coming out saying, look, your bank is fine. SVB was not like what you expected. Like it happened only purely because of a bank run. Um, I, I assure you that they had the assets because they, you know, what's crazy is they had government. They had assets. the assets. It was, the uh, wasn't they, going to they let were just them locked fail. up. You know how bad that would have looked if the government would have let them fail on li- on the assets that they didn't have liquid because they are investing in the fucking government. Like it would have been a shit show. <laughs> Um, and you know, it's, it was the second biggest failure of a bank at that time, but I think they did it. I think the government really handled it well by, you know, anybody that had stock options or anybody that was, uh, you know, part of the, the, the banking team got screwed a little bit. Um, but the actual investors were, you know, yeah, all their deposits were secure on they're, SVB. They're covering everything uh, but, even beyond FDIC. But I mean, I think it was the best case scenario. Like it was about to get dark. If SBB failed, there was already banks. I think New York ended up having a bank failure, um, and there was a couple others on the on the realm of almost it failing. Was, it was Silvergate, and then SBB, and then now Signature. It was three bank failures in a row last week. Yeah. And yeah, I, I I don't agree with bailouts, and I don't think this is a bailout. Um, I'm curious to see if they turn the printer back on to fix any of this i hope they don't um but Uh, i do think the rate hikes will stop now capitalize the profits and socialize the losses powell powell had that hearing uh either last week or a week before oh it was last week yeah i watched it they grilled him elizabeth uh realistically elizabeth warren might have started this um started as in the bank failures or started the in- bank runs oh like what yeah, I, I i can't remember what she said but it it was to the effect of what happens if like 200 people show up to a bank um that was buying treasury assets and then they don't have the money and then somebody was like oh shit my bank has those treasury assets maybe i should go get my money and then all you have to do is you know one person just has to say yeah they didn't give me my money at this bank before everybody's down there. Yeah. So it's all Elon Musk's fault. Dude, Twitter they should have just, that they, shit. SVB should have just taken a page out of DeFi, rug their liquidity real quick. Just rug Nobody, it. Just rug it, bro. And they, they weren't docs, so it's all good. Just lock the doors. What are they going to do? Complain. I went to the store the other day and the doors were locked. The, the sign said that it was open on the hours and it was closed. They rugged me, you know. I, I went to, to <laughs> I drove a while to get to that store that said it was open. Like in like 1950, that wouldn't have worked. You know, they'd be no. on the horn with like well, the there bank was actually, examiner. Thomas like, Massey, one of the guys on the banking committees, um, in in the Senate or Congress, I can't or the representatives, I can't remember which one he's on. Um, he said they had a closed door meeting and a demo. He just said a Democrat, like Zoom, right? Yeah, they had a they had a Zoom meeting, and one of the Democrats was asking why why can't they shut Twitter down while this is going on, or at least censor people from saying there's a bank run happening. And that that brings up an interesting uh, perspective because I mean, realistically, there's not it's free speech, but you know, is it though? Because people so, are getting banned well, for talking about Tesla. You know, if they're going to do that, if they're, you know, all this debate about Twitter, they just either need to nationalize it or, or literally let it go free speech. Like it's one or the other. I mean, you know, Elon's already turned. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, he didn't censor anybody for saying a bank run, but like Thomas Matt, somebody said that's like yelling fire in a crowded theater when there's no fire, and he said no, there was a fire though. So like, yeah, I mean, there, there, there's reason to be fearful and it's really hard to instill confidence in that kind of panic and that makes people that makes user behavior change pretty drastically and no bank in america can handle it so it's a double-edged sword listen you know? i got i got the, the very best way to handle all of this fear about banks and and things closing and depressions is to just live paycheck to paycheck i've been doing it for quite you, some time. you don't have to worry about what's in the bank because <laughs> there's nothing in there you know, that's right. Um, <laughs> I'm with that 100%. Now, is no. it illegal to say that the money that you put into your bank on a weekly basis is not there if you ever wanted to go take it out? I don't I've think taken that's out illegal. quite a chunk of money. Yeah. Well, I think, you, like, I think that expression or that that's like 
It's not though. Overflow. If you like, what's the highest? Well, I won't ask you what's your highest amount that you've ever taken out. But if 5, you were to 000. go to, yeah, if you were to go to a bank That's and try to take out significant amount, I like put 30, it to most people. Right, yeah, for sure. Unless you're paying like, ransom money, you know, like, like if I if I went and asked for thirty thousand dollars in cash, my bank would have to move money around. Like it would have to order money in. Right? Yeah, like because it just yeah. doesn't have it. Like they don't have more than like five. Typically, it's and I, typically it's one percent cash on hand. That's and that's like, that's a safety thing too. Yeah. No, so if you wanted to, robberies. but what's it, not safe is what they're using the the funds for in right. markets and you know the kind of assets they're holding. Which the good news is SVB mismanaged a bit, but mainly all of their assets were yield bearing assets. It was the interest hikes that eventually got to them. But you know, I gr- I think that banks should be regulated in what they can loan out funds for. I do not think it should be in the stock market like ever. It can be on government-backed assets or, you know, I know they, they you can't just hold cash because most of their money is made and, you know, loaning out money to some extent. But there's got to be a better method than what we're well, currently like, doing. Well, like, so much money, like, I don't, I'm not going to fault a bank for having to order money, right? They still have the money in their balance sheet. Right. It's just like so it's much just money like today do. is digital. It's like, I exactly. Don't, I don't have my It'd be awesome if the account. banks had a blockchain to look where all of their finances are and they're immutable. Well, it's not that they don't know where their finances yeah, are. They know it's where... the fact that it's physically not on hand because right. cash is Right, so like my pretty... checking account is not under my mattress. Right. right. Could be. And if, if a bank has multiple <laughs> branches, you know, then you have to spread it out. I don't know. It, it's it's pretty... a whole thing. And I mean, it's, it's, it's almost, it, it's a confidence thing, which is why I agree with what happened over the weekend. Um, if you can't instill confidence that the banks have money, then the whole nation's going to go fucking run the bank. I mean, it's, yeah. it, that's what happens in society. It's how it will always be. Uh, if people can't access their money, they get scared. Yeah. So, just think about the toilet paper thing in 2020. A hundred percent. I mean, that's a perfect example right there. I mean, people actually lost their fucking minds over toilet Charmin, paper. Charmin was going crazy. You and know, I had just right bought now. before the lockdowns. I had just bought the mega pack. So I was fucking solid. Dude, we were sharing one cloth in our house. We didn't get none. <laughs> you get beat if you use more than one sheet. <laughs> you ever seen them extreme cheapskates where they use like straight up yes. cloth pads? And, and wash like, them. They're, they're washing all that shit stain on there. Uh, Brother, so I can't do it. I saw a TikTok I'm, of, um, I know you don't use TikTok. It was like a hoarders or something. And oh, it was like, no. He was like, oh, you're going to stop pooping in this bucket. <laughs> and she's like, yep, I'm going to stop pooping in the bucket. And like the guy cuts away on the TikTok and he's like, you see that face? That's not the face of someone who's going to be done pooping in the bucket. <laughs> he's going to leave and she's going to go poop in the order bucket. Is, I've seen some really bad ones about like, you know, where they were just shitting in the back of their toilet bowl because like the front one was full and like the plumbers couldn't reach anything. So they were just like filling up any orifice they could in their house full of shit because it's just like, don't know where else to put it. <laughs> it's just DeFi. That's it's all it is. crazy, dude. That's crazy. Um, that's oh, all we got. Shit. That's what we got for news. Um, the news and shit. News and shit. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you and good night. We should be back tomorrow. Oh, not tomorrow. Ooh, Thursday. I'm out tomorrow. And then I'm out this weekend. So it's like the semi daily show. <laughs> um, the bi daily show. I got some personal stuff I'm taking care of, and that should be taken care of at the end of this week so we'll i'll see you thursday how about that yep i'm down all right here thank you and good night everybody night guys